progesterone 101 can you believe this video everything you need to know about progesterone for dogs three years ago we shot imagine what we know now right let's do another episode an update to the video we shot three years ago on everything you need to know about progesterone testing. All right, guys, stay tuned. You're not gonna want to miss this episode of British Hacks. What's going on, boy fam? I actually, I want the people to see what time it is right now. Yo, it's 2.30 in the morning right now. We've been just trying to shoot as many videos as possible, so y'all can thank Wilson for this. <laughs> so progesterone, right? I, I just figured, you know, we cover cover everything I know because um, there's new things that we use when it comes to dealing with progesterone and we've gotten such better success rates since when I first kind of started dealing with progesterone and so on and so forth, right? So progesterone, first of all, what is progesterone? So progesterone, when you're talking about dog breeding and you're in the dog breeding space, it's, it's a reproductive hormone. It's a hormone that we can test with machines, right? This is our machine that we use to test progesterone. And it allows us to know the amount of progesterone the dog has in its body, right? Being able to measure that really tells us when the dog is ready to be bred. It's actually the most accurate way to know when it's time for the dog to be bred, right? having progesterone. And now the other side of it is with progesterone, it also allows you to know when it's time that the puppies are gonna be born, right? So there's some things that we do now, like I said, kind of differently than when we shot that last video um, that has allowed us to significantly increase our success rates for getting nice, healthy, large litters, right? So again, when someone talks about progesterone testing, they're talking about measuring the reproductive hormone in the dog and being able to tell via a progesterone test, a progesterone machine, um, when the dog is ready to be bred. Or if they say a reverse progesterone, they're meaning when the dog is ready to have her puppies. Now that we know the basics, let's kind of get right into it, right? So with progesterone testing, a dog's heat cycle, like when she comes into heat, she starts bleeding, she's gonna be ready to be bred, all that kind of stuff. It kind of looks like something like this, right? It kind of looks like like a like a roller coaster, right? And this roller coaster that I'm talking about, let's just say this is the the day, this is the day the dog bleeds, right? This is the day that we see blood, right? Generally, at the end here, let's just say this is the this is the day, this is the day the dog has pups, right? My special camera guy, can you see this? Yes. I know it's chicken scratch. Can you read it? <laughs> yes. Perfect. <laughs> you guys should have seen the episode that we did on uh, on when I had to draw dogs. Anyway. <laughs> Yo, for a guy so, that lives with dogs, he... Yes and no, I'm... I'm, I'm I, I, I green I, dogs, I'm not an artist. artist. <laughs> Fair enough. So this whole cycle here may be about... Uh, 73 and then 77. Three. 77. See, that's why I have you here. <laughs> yeah, this is around 73 to 77 days, right? This 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 whole cycle. So when the dog comes into heat and she starts bleeding, she's going to be at very low numbers and you're going to want to do your first test around, your first proget progesterone test around, I want to say like, I say that I start testing around day five to day seven. I like to be closer to five because sometimes you may have thought the dog was bleeding on this day and she was actually bleeding a lot earlier than that. But the thing was, was that she was looking up the blood so you didn't notice it or anything. So around day five to day seven, some people will start like day 10 and stuff like that. I, don't, I like to get a baseline first. I wanna know that her numbers are nice and low first. I don't wanna test her and she's already super high. But besides the point, this is the whole, let's just go back. This is the whole cycle, right? The dog bleeds somewhere around here where you're gonna breed her. And somewhere around here, she's going to have her puppies, right? And the whole cycle is from like 73 to 77 days, right? Because when she bleeds, this is for, right, this portion right here, if we can go like this, this portion right here is around 10 to 14 days, right? So basically, when she first starts bleeding, and just follow me with this, guys, because this episode, compared to the first one I did, this is just really off the top of my head. If she starts bleeding... At day five to day seven, we're gonna start testing her, right? And then usually, 
usually around day 10 to 14, not exactly, but generally somewhere in that area, the dog is, is usually ready to be bred. Sometimes I've seen it go as far as day 25. Don't take this as an exact rule, but usually this is 10 to 14 days. So generally around here is when we're gonna be breeding. So what you also need to understand is how the progesterone is measured, right? So this is our chart, for example, right? Let's just say this is our chart. This is a 30 up here. This is a zero down here, right? And going up is just, is just, this is the chart. It just starts from zero and goes all the way up to 30, for example, especially like with this machine, for example. So this is measured in nanograms per milliliter. And now in other countries, it goes by like nanograms per mole, which is usually gonna be a much higher number. So for example, this is a 30 and nanograms per mole, it might be like 100 or something like that. So you also need to be mindful, like if you're getting semen shipped or you're shipping semen for a client and they're in the UK, for example, and they say, hey, my dog is a 100, that may be like a 30 here in the United States. This is an exact, um, you need to just double check if it's nanograms per mole or nanograms per milliliter. That's what you just wanna check. But for the most part, here in America, where we're at, we test in nanograms per milliliter. And we, on this particular machine that I use now, it, it goes from a zero. Typically, you're gonna be breeding all the way to like a 30, and it can go past that. So besides the point, now we know our numbers, right? We know that the dog could be anywhere in this range. So when she bleeds, after five to seven days, we're doing our test. Generally, she won't be ready. Let's say these numbers around here, she might be like, I don't know, let's say she's a, a, a three, for example, right? Then we test her again up here, and she is a 15. We're gonna go ahead and do our breeding. Then after our breeding, around 60 to 63 days, right around here, we have our puppies. Now, the other thing is that I want to say around day 57, say like, let's say 57 is right here, day 57, we're going to see her progesterone start to drop. And as her progesterone starts to drop, that tells us that the dog is going to be ready to have her puppies. So um, that's kind of like how the dog's heat cycle works, right? So when we're timing progesterone to see when she's ready to have her puppies, we're looking for the numbers to start going upwards. And we're trying to catch her right at this upward climb. We don't want to get her when she's at her highest because that oftentimes that's usually it's, it's too late. So we want to make sure that her numbers are going up and we catch her basically right before she really starts to spike. And then same thing for when we're timing, when we want to have puppies born. Say we want to make sure that we have uh, a C-section planned properly. We want to make sure that around day, I like to be around day 57, we look for the decline in the numbers to drop. And once we see the numbers significantly drop, and usually on, on these types of machines, you want to be like around a three. Some can vary. Some I've seen as high as like a five. But basically, as these numbers start to drop and get low, that's when you'll do your C-section and have your puppies. Or if you just want to know that you're going to have puppies so you won't go away on your vacation or whatever the case would be, that's when you'll do that, right? So this is generally the dog's heat cycle. So I want you to understand when we're timing progesterone and want to know when we're having puppies, we're looking for that climb, right? So once you have this understanded, we can kind of go into the next thing of understanding when it's time to actually breed. So let me wipe this down real quick and let's cover when it's time to actually breed, right? And this is like a crash course on this, really. I mean, you think I'm doing good, Wilson? Doing great. If you want further information, I know a place you can find it. Breeders University. You're right, Breeders University, if you want to learn more about this stuff. <laughs> now that we know that the dog's heat cycle kind of goes up, kind of goes down, and we're, we're, we're just trying to catch the right timing so that we can breed her, right? Well, this is now what I didn't include in my previous episode right when i shot this three years ago that i know now that has allowed us to have the utmost accuracy in our breedings right and it's the power of numbers doubling i can't speak for every machine but with the machines that we've used we've had amazing success with this right so once you understand the dog's heat cycle i'm gonna make this very quick and easy you need to understand the powering of numbers doubling right this is extremely important right so these are the results from 
a textbook scenario of a dog that we did a test on, uh, so specifically on our machine. And a couple of things. The first thing is when people try to go and claim that, oh, you know, this machine accuracy, this machine, and they try to compare numbers and so on and so forth. What you need to understand is that all these machines use different charts and different forms of measurements. But what you're looking for is the powering of numbers doubling. So I'm gonna break this down for you guys so you guys can understand this because we took, for example, an IDEX machine. My vet owns an IDEX Catalyst One machine. It's probably the most expensive machine you can have. I think it's like a $30,000 machine, right? Well, this is under like $3,000, right? When we did our tests, the numbers were completely different. My vet said, your machine may be, you know, incorrect. When we actually took the numbers though and compared the numbers of doubling side by side, the machine was actually accurate. So I'm gonna explain how you can understand this now, right? So on day one, our dog was a 0.1. On day five, our dog was a 2.3. On day nine, our dog was a 6.0. Day 11, our dog was at 8.7. So at day nine, for example, anything uh, before that, the dog was way too early. At day nine was 6.0. On this machine, that's roughly around ovulation, right? After ovulation, ovulation is almost like when the eggs start to mature and the female's ready for them to get fertilized. It can take anywhere between, uh, I believe it's two days which a lot of breeders have always gone by the two day rule, breed two days after ovulation. So what some veterinarians in genetics and reproductions have found is that it can be up to like four or five days. So that's why seeing the power of the numbering, the numbers doubling is so important. At six, we know that the dog is starting to ovulate. So approximately in 24 to 48 hours after that, we should see some, some spikes go on, right? Well, two days after that, the dog is at 8.7. So we've seen the numbers are still continuing to go up, but they're not quite doubling. They're not quite spiking up. Just like that chart I showed you guys, right? This chart, the numbers are still all just kind of staying low here. None of them are catching. We're not catching any numbers on a, on a spike quite yet, right? So 0 0.1, 2.3, 6.0, which is ovulation. So we know it's like somewhere at, we have to be somewhere at the start if this is 6.0. Well, two days later, she's at 8.7 which tells us, okay, we're a little bit closer, but we're not quite there yet. After day 11, we wait. The next time we test her on day 15, she's already a 15. So that was essentially the first double that we saw. So anytime we see a double on the first double, we can do an AI, right? On the first double. So she went from an eight on day 15, we test her and she's a 15. So that was essentially kind of like the first double we see go on. So you could do an AI, the first double. On the second double, the next, the very next day, she's a 26.7. Because her numbers doubled a second time, we can do an AI or TCI, right? So that's on the second double because she went from a 15 to a 26. It's, it's, it's not necessarily that the numbers have to double exactly. It's more like ranges when you see these jumps, right? We're jumping and, and they're jumping and they're starting to become bigger and bigger leaps in between, right? So on the second double, 26.7, we can do an AI or a TCI. Then she goes from a 26, boom, jumps up another four or five points. This is day 17, the very next day. It was, it's usually gonna be within 24 to 48 hours that you see these doubles start to take place. So now she's a 30. So at a 30, and it's the third double, you can do a TCI or surgical, because she's a 30 now, and that's the third double. So now on the, the day, day 18, the final day, she goes from a 30 and jumps 10 points, and now she's a 40, this is day 18. Well, now on the fourth double, you would do a surgical. That's kind of the best way when you're doing progesterone testing. How you wanna look at things is like I said, you want to look at, all right, in the beginning, she's going to come up very slow. But basically, once we know it's time to breed, it's going to be where we see numbers double, right? So that's why I don't harp on a single number. I know people who say, hey, at a 26, I always breed. That's what I do. I always breed at 26. And again, if dogs were robots, that would make sense. 
but because they're living organisms and their hormone levels are usually always different, when you see numbers spiking like this, we get typically a much better success rate because the numbers may be different, but the numbers are spiking. And uh, that usually indicates that the eggs are mature and ready to be fertilized, regardless of what dog you're testing. So this has given us extreme accuracy when it came to getting dogs pregnant, right? Let's just talk about one final thing. And then I think this kind of covers the episode. I, wanna, I don't want to throw too much at you guys. Maybe we'll make this a series. We'll do another episode on this, right? When it comes time to timing now, say we want a time when puppies are going to be born, right? Say we want a time when will pups be born, right? Question mark. It goes in the opposite direction, right? Because we, we climbed our way up. Now, when we want to know when the puppies are going to be born or when it's time to do a C-section, we want to watch for the numbers to go down, right? Downwards on this chart. So basically we're doing it in reverse. We were looking for the numbers to start doubling and going up to know it was time to get her pregnant. Well, now that we know she's pregnant because we did a, a, a pregnancy test, because there's no, another misconception that people think that just because the dog's numbers go up means that the dog is pregnant. Progesterone and the numbers being high have nothing to do with the dog being pregnant. You need to do either an ultrasound, you need to do either um, a pregnancy test. The machine does pregnancy, but it's a different type of test. It tests uh, a different hormone. Or you could do x-rays, so on and so forth. You could feel the stomach and maybe puppies are kicking, whatever. But long story short, when it comes time to timing when the dog is ready to have her puppies, this might be around day 57 is usually when I start we will see the same exact thing. The numbers will start to go downwards. When we were trying to get the dog pregnant, the numbers went down, right? Now that we want to find out when the puppies are going to be born, the numbers are going to go up to the opposite. Yeah, opposite, exactly. So the numbers were going higher. Now the numbers are going lower. So instead of being at a 40, now at day 57, I might test the dog and she might be like a 15. At day 59, I might test her, she might be a six, you know? And as your numbers go down is basically when she's gonna have her puppies. So typically on like, you know, the machines that I like to use, it's somewhere usually around like a three, a four. Some situations people haven't been able to get away with five. Basically, once you're like in this range right here, where you're like around a three, maybe four or five, you start doing your C-sections, or at least you just know the closer you get to the lower numbers, right? Once you hit like a zero, for example, that's active labor. The dog's already gonna be pushing puppies out. That was just like a quick crash course on progesterone. I think that really kind of covers everything that you need to know in order to be able to test like an expert without all the filler. I think we tried to just get straight to the points. So doubling is huge, guys. And I can't speak for other machines because I haven't quite had as great success when it comes to the power of, of numbers doubling. But if you guys do it, I'm telling you guys, and follow a model similar to this, you will get nice big litters. You know, nice big litters. You'll have C-sections at the right time, so on and so forth, right? It's because you're no longer taking a chart and saying, hey, we just breed at this number. And that's why you're not, your success, your success rates aren't that high. Let me know what y'all think. You know, drop a comment down below. I hope this was helpful. I hope it was useful. This is something that I see people talk about when it comes to progesterone and a lot of vets don't even know this. They just think that, hey, we just breed at this number and that's it. If you were to customize it a little bit more for the dog, you'd get much better success rates, you know? So anyway, guys, I hope this information is helpful. I hope it's useful. Remember, the power of doubling. First double AI, second double AI or TCI, third double TCI or surgical, fourth double surgical, all right? Most information is helpful, hope it's useful, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Breeders Hacks. And don't forget, we also carry the progesterone machines on BreedersHacks.com. All right, guys. What a guy. What a guy. What do you think? That was solid. I like that one. All right? Yeah. I don't know.